Hello and welcome to part two of A-Level Physics ISA Help. This time we're looking at plotting graphs. So take a look at this graph I'm midway through plotting. First of all, notice that those points are plotted on more than 50% of each axis on the graph. Notice if you look at the last point just here, that last point is at 0.72 on the y-axis and the axis goes from 0 to 1.2. Midway then? Okay, it would be 0 0.6, so we're just above 50%. And the same on the x-axis. We're at 50 here, and the axis goes from 0 to 65. has to be over 50% on each axis. Also note that the scale on the axes is using up the majority of the paper. Please don't draw graphs just in one small corner of the paper. That is not acceptable. It has to be bigger than that also look at the points themselves. If I circle this point here, the points are checked for accuracy. You get a very small degree of leeway with this. They have to be correct to within one millimeter. And that is one square on your graph paper if you're using the small square graph paper. It is not a lot. And there are people who I mark every year who lose points because some of their points are not plotted accurately enough. Whilst we're on the subject of plotting points, let me just show you the best way of doing that. The best way, if I had another point here at 55, is to use a ruler and trace the line up from the x-axis to the value you wish to plot. In this case, I wish to plot 55, and then find where that crosses the line on the y-axis that you wish to plot. Now, I'm going to put my point at 55, and 0 0.8. So I would draw a vertical line as accurately as possible, and it's quite difficult on the computer, but I'll give it a go. And I'm doing it thick just so you can see, just to make the points, and then across a horizontal line, they're meeting at the point that I want to mark. So it is a vertical cross. Can you see that? Now a lot of the time people do these type of crosses instead diagonal crosses and sometimes I even see blobs drawn as well. Now neither of those two things is as exact as a vertical cross that is drawn with a pencil and ruler and obviously a sharp pencil is better than a thick pencil for doing that. So accuracy is important. Another thing that we've forgotten on this uh, graph at the moment that you've probably spotted is to label the axes. Now the axes need to be labelled not only with the title of what they are this on the y-axis is PD. It needs to have units as well that need to be correct. And on the x-axis over here, you can see I haven't got room at the bottom. It's perfectly acceptable to do the uh, title at the end, just here. And I haven't got room here. And it's also acceptable to use the letter that represents the quantity as well, particularly if you've used the same letter to represent it in your results table. So I'm going to plot current here, which has the standard letter in equations as I, and we measure that in amps. Notice also the scale that we're using on each of the axes here. Now these scales are using one large square here for 0 0.1. So this distance here is obviously 0 0.1 of a volt. Now please don't use scales that are awkward to use. Scales that maybe, instead of going up in ones or twos, use one square for three. So in this case, for instance, if I was to draw my axes here and I was to go from 0 to 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 to 0 0.9, those types of scales are not acceptable. Scale needs to be in twos or fours or some other round, easy to plot number. The last thing that we need to add onto our graphs is a line of best fits. Now I'm going to do this with a straight line tool on the computer. You obviously need to use a pencil and ruler. A mistake that a lot of people make is to start their line of best fit always at the origin. Lines of best fit don't need to start at the origin. Don't need to do that. Lines of best fit need to match your data. And what we're looking for here is a line in this case it's going to be straight but it could be curved, that best matches your data. And that means that there should be equal numbers of points on either side of the line. In this case I'm just going to adjust this line so I've now got one, two, three points above, so it needs to be a bit lower. I've now got four points above, one, two, three points below, and three on the line. So I'm just going to adjust a little bit, I think it needs to go just there. 
a line of best fit. Now notice that that line of best fit, if it was extrapolated, would not go through the origin. So in this case, this is not directly proportional. Remember, for a line to represent direct proportionality, it needs to pass through the origin. So this is not directly proportional. It's a linear relationship, but not directly proportional. That question often comes up on ISO tests and is worthwhile bearing in mind. Well, I hope you found that helpful. That's the end of part two.